police officers for the city of Kent and the university are preparing for weekend festivities. How the officers will keep people safe on Halloween weekend. Want to enjoy some pancakes with the Kent State basketball teams? Well, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Where you can go and enjoy some hot cakes and hang out with some MAC champions. After three long weeks, a new speaker has finally been elected in the House. Find out who. Well, these onions will make you cry, but also sick. Why this company is recalling batches of diced onions for containing salmonella. All these stories and more as your TV2 News starts right now. This is TV2 News. Wednesday evening, Portage County. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Josh Aponte. And I'm Blake Aloja. We start tonight with some festive news with Halloween right around the corner. That is right, Blake. For some spooky but also safe news, we'll take it over to Kennedy Gotham with more. Hey, Kennedy. Hi, guys. That's right. Halloween is almost here, and I'm very excited. But after talking with local officers, they gave me insight to what happens on the days leading up to the holiday and how they prepare to keep students safe. Halloween falls on a Tuesday this year, but police expect the parties to start the weekend before. Kent City Police and University officers are expecting to see many students and community members celebrating this Saturday. So we need to make sure that we have enough personnel and enough resources in the city to help keep everyone safe. Historically, Kent State was known for their Halloween parties, and people from surrounding cities would party here, but police say this has changed. Uh, we don't see quite the crowds that we used to any longer, but uh, we understand that there's a lot of potential for a large number of people coming downtown, but also possibly to some of our off-campus student housing. <coughs> people from Akron, Cleveland, Youngstown, and they're going to be looking for the parties. And oftentimes it's those people who have bad intentions and they kind of descend on the college parties and we see a lot of problems there. For students on campus, there are safety resources like an escort service, which walks students to different campus locations if they feel unsafe. There are also phones on the blue lights that call campus police. Only takes a few minutes for one of the safety assistants to meet up with that person or persons and walk them to where they need to go. And if you happen to see someone who is in danger or needs help, KSU police have a good Samaritan policy so that you can report it without being punished. We don't want people to think about, you know, what if I'm getting my friend in trouble? What if I'm getting in trouble? Our main concern is the well-being and safety of, of those who have possibly drank too much. Overall, Kent State University police say you can have fun, just be aware of your surroundings. Being aware of your surroundings is very important. So with your head down on your phone, you're not looking around to see what's going on around you. And that would probably be the best safety advice I can give. So Kennedy, you brought up the blue light system. What is that? So there are around 50 blue lights located near campus walkways and campus parking lots. And if students are worried they're being followed or need police assistance, they can just press a button on the blue pillar, which will dial dispatch. But there's no physical phone. It's just a button. So you can just speak directly into the pillar and describe the situation to the police. Did the officers have any advice for students? Yeah, Sergeant Knowles said that if students are walking alone, they should try and find a other group of people and kind of just tag along with them. And then Lieutenant Lewis warns that if students are underage and have an open container, they will be arrested. And even people who are 21 years or older can be cited for having an open container. Both officers want students to be safe and stay out of trouble. Good evening, Kent State and all of Portage County. My name is Sophia Sonato, and I'm here with your hump day weather report. And looking at what we have currently in Kent, Ohio, I must say the temperatures are looking very unusual for the month of October. It is currently 70 degrees and sunny, and it's feeling that same way. Dew points at 47 degrees, and those winds are north-northeast at about 10 miles per hour. Pretty solid humidity levels at 38%, and visibility is at 9 miles. 
Moving into my forecast for tomorrow, it's going to be a high of 73, partly cloudy with a low of 61. It'll be mainly cloudy throughout the day and there is a low chance of rain, so we will be monitoring that as well. And it's going to be pretty windy, south-southwest to 12 miles per hour in the sunset at around 6.38 p.m. My on-campus forecast for tomorrow is as follows. 8 a.m. is going to be 58 degrees and mostly cloudy, so nothing too crazy, but there will be a bit of sun so that you don't have to bundle up too much. At 12 o'clock noon, it'll be 68 degrees, jumping up about 10, and it'll still be mostly cloudy. But like I said, we'll have a little bit of sun peeking through. So be sure to dress accordingly because by 4 p.m., it's going to jump up even more, breaking that 70-degree mark at 71, and it will have a full cloud cover as well. And that is all I have for now. Stay tuned as I go into the temperatures across the state of Ohio, and we'll dive into the risk of rain for any Halloween festivities or trick-or-treating on Tuesday. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sophia. Ohio Means Jobs will host two transportation job fairs to address the increasing demand for drivers in the industry. The fairs are set to take place from noon to 4 p.m. on November 30th and December 11th and will take place at the OMJ Center at 253 South Chestnut Street in Ravenna. To prepare for the job fairs, participants are encouraged to use career services such as resume writing and mock interviewing provided at the OMJ Resource Room. With Thanksgiving approaching, a new study shows that accidents in the Buckeye State are on the rise during the holiday. The study from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration over the last 15 years shows a higher number of fatal accidents on certain holidays in Ohio. The biggest spike among the holidays was Thanksgiving at 246% of the fatal crashes compared to other days in November. On November 7th, Ohio could join 23 other states as the latest to legalize recreational marijuana, but some opponents of the issue have raised concerns about the potential impact on driver safety. According to research from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the combined effect of legalization and retail sales was a 5.8% increase in injury and a 4.1% increase in fatal crashes. The UAW strike hits home with 139 workers laid off at a GM metal stamping plant in Parma. The layoff is temporar temporary and the workers will return to their jobs when the strike is over. While on break, the workers will receive $500 a week in strike pay. Economists are saying that there could be a potential impact on the labor market and there might be an increased challenge in fighting affordable cars. And Trump back in the courtroom. What the latest updates are from the former president's civil lawsuit and why he was fined $10,000. And PlayStation already has over 104 million users around the world, but they have unveiled plans to increase that number. More after the break. Every one of us has a voice. And every voice has the power to shape the world. Ours is no different. Our voice is 85 years in the making. A voice that's more than 700 students strong, one of the largest in the nation. It's 10 different award-winning media partners sharing 34 outlets, all working united toward a common goal. Our voice reaches 30,000 households on TV, over 22,000 magazine readers per year, half a million newspapers, feature films and stores nationwide. Our voice is pride in what we do. It empowers students, emerging professionals, to ask tough questions and demand answers. We believe in our voice. We believe in its ability to change the world. And our voice makes us who we are. Gotcha. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to teen-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the- Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. 
You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Tomorrow's news leaders. Today's top stories. From an award-winning student newsroom. This is TV2 News, truly Portage County. Welcome back. Republican Re Representative Mike Johnson of Louisiana scored enough votes to win the House Speaker position. The House has been without a speaker for a little over three weeks now since Kevin McCarthy was ousted. The victory comes after three other candidates failed to get the votes needed. Johnson received unanimous support from all Republican representatives on the vote. And sticking in politics, former President Donald Trump was fined $10,000 for violating his gag order after he took the stand in his civil trial. Earlier today, Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen testified for the second day in a row. Trump left the courtroom after Cohen seemed to have backtracked on his testimony. The case itself threatens Trump's business in New York with allegations of him and his co-defendants committing repeated fraud. With the conflict in Israel continuing, we have lots of other international news to dive into. TV2's Nikki Gajewski is here to tell us more news about what's going on around the globe. Hey, Nikki. Hey, guys. As always, international relations are always unfolding, whether it's visitors being received by U.S. leaders or diplomats or updates on the state of Israel. First, we start with Australia's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, visiting Biden today. The two are expected to formulate an agreement which would allow U.S. companies to launch into space from Australia. Additionally, there's the expected to discuss AUKUS. That's the partnership between the U.K., Australia, and the U.S. to produce nuclear-power-armed submarines. For Australia, Albanese's next international visit will be to China. Israel has the right, and I would add, a responsibility to respond to the slaughter of their people. And we will ensure Israel has what it needs to defend itself against these terrorists. That's a guarantee. We also have to remember that Hamas does not represent, let me say it again, Hamas does not represent the vast majority of the Palestinian people on the Gaza Strip or anywhere else. Now for an update with the hostage crisis in Israel. The nation announced there are 135 hostages holding foreign passports from 25 countries being held in the Gaza area. 54 hostages from Thailand are held, along with 15 from Argentina, 12 from Germany, and 12 from the U.S. 259 foreign hostages were murdered, and 69 are still missing. As of now, the number of hostages in the Gaza Strip has exceeded 200. Staying in the Gaza area, the U.N. Relief and Works Agency warns it will be forced to halt operations in Gaza very soon if fuel isn't delivered. UNRWA is the largest U.N. agency in Gaza. The work deals with providing shelter to over 60,000, along with providing clean drinking water to those people. This clean drinking water is used for purposes like baking bread. For now, UNRWA's operations are still continuing. For more on these stories and more, visit the News tab on CountWire.com or check back in, nec in next week with me. I'm Nikki Ojeski, reporting for TV2 News. Now let's pivot to some weather news. Hurricane Otis touched down in Mexico this morning, knocking out all communications. Southern Mexico was mostly affected by Otis, which was declared a Category 5 hurricane just before it made landfall. Mexico's President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrenar said there are no reports of casualties yet, but they are, may be impacted by all communications. TV2's own Sofia Sanado is here with more weather news. Sofia? Thank you guys and welcome back everyone. We're currently looking at temperatures across Northeast Ohio with Kent at 70 degrees as well as Worcester, Sandusky and Mansfield at 69 degrees as well as Canton, Cleveland and Youngstown are at 71 degrees, shout out Y-Town, and Ashtabula is also sitting at 69 degrees. Moving forward to the entire state of Ohio, Akron, Steubenville, and Columbus are all sitting at 70 degrees. Lima is at 69, as well as most of Northeast Ohio. Dayton's at 71, Cincinnati's at 74 degrees, and Athens is also breaking that 70 degree mark at 73 degrees. 
Moving into my seven day forecast, we're seeing a lot of rain like we did last week. Tomorrow, as I mentioned before, it is going to be a high of 70 degree, 73 degrees with a low of 61. It'll be mostly cloudy and some pretty heavy winds. On Friday, we'll have more sun with a high of 75 and a low of 60. And on Saturday, we are starting to see a pattern of rain build once again with a high of 62 and a low of 47, but those showers will mostly be in the morning. On Sunday, we will have rain all day with a high of 57 and a low of 43. And on Monday, morning showers will be back with a high of 46 and a low of 32. Now, Halloween is on Tuesday with a high of 42 and a low of 30. We are lucky to not have any rain, but it will be cold. So as much as those trick-or-treaters won't like it, they will need to bundle up. And this time next week, it'll be a high of 41 with a low of 25. Definitely something very different in comparison to the 70 degrees and sun that we are dealing with right now. And my report stops there. With all you need to know about the weather this weekend and next, stay informed at KentWire.com. From the Franklin Hall Studio, I'm Sophia Sonato. Back to you, Josh. Thank you, Sophia. Well, for all my fellow college students out there, if you have any federal student loans, you might want to double check that bank account. Around 305,000 borrowers have been told the wrong amount to pay. The Department of Education says it's working with servicers to fix the problem. It says impacted borrowers will be in forbearance until the issue is resolved. And food insecurity has grown for families with children in 2020 to 2022, according to a new report from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. 3.3 million households with kids faced food insecurity, which is an increase of over 1 million families from the prior year. Experts point to the loss of pandemic assistance as a contributing factor behind the changes in food insecurity. These onions don't just have layers, but also salmonella. A salmonella outbreak has caused a recall of diced onions. The company Gill's Onions issued the recall as well as the CDC sending out a food safety alert. The outbreak caused at least 73 illnesses across 22 states. The CDC recommends checking freezers and refrigerators for affected products so that they can be thrown out or returned. A new study shows that around half of the miners using the popular streaming app Twitch are sharing their location. The study looked at 100 miners ages 17 and under who streamed content and concluded that 47% shared their time, 38% provided schedules, and half display their location. Twitch does take steps to protect kids, however researchers say these measures can be easily skirted. Well, if you want to keep watching Ted Lasso and other Apple Plus favorites, you might want to pull out that wallet. Apple is raising the price of its streaming service to $10 a month or $99 for a year. The price increased $3 from the previous amount of $7 a month. This is the latest streaming service to raise prices this year, joining Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, and Max. Do you love breakfast and basketball? Well, stay tuned to find out how you can enjoy both at the same time. And lots of things are going on in the sports world, including the Cleveland Cavaliers starting their season tonight. Who else but TV2 legend Matt Corrali is here in the studio to tell us all about these sports news. And now, your TV2 Sports Report. What's a better way to kick off the basketball season than with some breakfast? Kent State Athletics is presenting tip-off breakfast tomorrow. Both, team, both the men's and women's team basketball teams, as well as their coaches, will be at the event to start off the season. Registration is required, and the cost to get in is $30. The event will be tomorrow at 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. at the Max Center. Matt, I hope you're going to get some pancakes tomorrow. Well, Josh, quite frankly, I'm not because I have to be on the Flashcast tomorrow, and so do you. You're producing the show, so I hope you're there at least because you're the uh, sir that starts to drink in when, it comes to, when it comes to that. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Corelli, and this is the latest in the world of sports in Portage County and beyond. As we start with basketball tonight, I know it sounds pretty weird to talk about basketball in October because that's what we're going to do. Believe it or not, hoop season is here as the newest NBA campaign kicked off last night with a pair of games. And before we know it, basketball will tip off here on Kent State's campus. And earlier today, exciting news just got released for the women's team. As it was announced, they will have at least one game broadcasted on national television this season. 
You can watch their matchup against Northern Illinois on Sunday, January 14th, live on CBS Sports Network at 6 o'clock. You can follow Kent State all season long by following us across social media at TV2KSU Sports. Let's go to a highlight, and let's go to Philly to be more specific. D-backs in Phillies, Game 7, nothing more needs to be said. Philly was up two games to none and three games to two earlier in the series. Ranger Suarez looking to end the comeback here. Top one, Christian Walker grounds one in the third. Phillies are going to try and two, turn two here, but they can't. Corbin Carroll will score. It's 1-0 Arizona. In the bottom of the second, Brandon Fout facing Alec Baum, and he'll hit an Alec Baum. That'll get the fans back in it. It's 1-1 one one here with one swing of the bat as the bank is rocking. Bottom of the fourth, Bryson Stott at the dish, and he'll hit one to the gap in left center field. That ball will roll all the way to the wall. Here comes Baum chugging to the plate. Here's the relay throw from Geraldo Pardomo. Safe. It's 2-1 to one Phillies, and the home team is on top for the first time tonight. Top five, Corbin Carroll at the plate. Two down, and Corbin Carroll delivers. The rookie finishes three for four with two ribbies and a stolen base on the evening. The game is tied at two. The very next batter, it will be Gabriel Moreno, as he will poke one into right field for a base hit. This is going to be a tough play. Carroll running like a pennant is on the line, because it is. He's safe. And Moreno will be caught up between second and first, but it won't matter. D-backs lead it 3-2. Arizona gets one more on a Cattell Marte RBI double. And in the ninth, two down. Patrick Sewald facing Jake Cave coming off the bench. Ball game. Chaos in Citizens Bank Park. Diamondbacks win the pennant and will advance to the World Series for the first time in 22 years. And remember when I said basketball was back? Well, not only is that true, but the Cleveland Cavaliers are as well. They open their season tonight on the road against the Brooklyn Nets. They will look to go back to the postseason after getting bounced by the Knicks in the first round. And gentlemen, I'm interested to see, because you are members of our sports department, what you, what you think is going to be the ending tail of the Cavs season. You're expecting playoffs, maybe a finals appearance, maybe miss the playoffs at all. What are you thinking? What do you think of Josh? Well, I'm hoping the Cavs will get past at least the first round. Mm -hmm. I think they will. I think they'll finally get yep. something figured out. Yeah. Um, as long as injuries don't play a factor, but mm -hmm. I'm hoping, you know, second round, maybe Eastern Conference Finals if That's we're lucky. Bold. What about you, Blake? You know, you're wearing the Cavs attire, and you <laughs> yeah, don't even think they're going to go that far <laughs> in the playoffs. I think we have a great chance. We, we added some shooters in the offseason with yep. Max Struess. Yep. I like the mm -hmm. additions. I think we could maybe finish in the top three in the Eastern Conference. Ooh. I know that's a big, wow. it's a big take, but yeah. I think we can mount a run. How yeah. about you, Matt? I mean, look, the, what you guys are saying, it very well could happen, mm -hmm. but... I'm going to be honest, the rebounding problem that we had in the playoffs, mm -hmm. first round against the Knicks, didn't really solve any things. But yeah. we'll see. I have faith. Maybe we'll advance to the second round. That's the end goal for the Cavs this season and beyond. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, guys. LeBron James is a very happy man as one of his favorite slogans has been freed of trademark. More when TV2 News returns. PlayStation is making their controllers more accessible to a wider audience. Sony introduced Project Leonardo, which is a newly designed PlayStation controller, which is designed for those with disabilities. The controller is easily compatible with third-party accessories, as well as customizable. The Project Leonardo is still in development, and there is no set date for release yet. The Taco Tuesday slogan is for the people once again after a restaurant in New Jersey dropped ownership of the trademark they held for over 30 years. The, de the decision was to drop the trademark was influenced by Taco Bell, who filed with the U.S. trademark regulators earlier this year and produced commercials pushing for the liberation of the term. Both Taco Bell and Jack in the Box are running promotions to celebrate the liberation of Taco Tuesday. Well, Blake, as you said, I think that LeBron would 100% be happy oh, about 100%. that one. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I just like the idea of it being called a liberation. The liberation. Yeah, Very good liberation. choice. I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Big word. Don't know what it means. Oh. Yeah, right. Well, that <laughs> is all the time we have for you tonight. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us. And make sure to follow TV2 News on all social media at Kent Wired. And check out our website at KentWired.com. I'm Blake Aloja. I'm Sophia Sonato. I'm Matt Corrali. And I'm Josh Aponte. Have a great evening, everyone.